The name of my book is Hidden History of Alexandria, D.C., and the last part of that title is very important because it's not about Alexandria, Virginia. It's about a period in history when the District of Columbia included parts of what's now Virginia. What I wanted to do was look at this 50-year time period and get a sense of why Alexandria became part of the, the District of Columbia, what went wrong, and why it left. One of the things I really wanted to do with the book is give people a sense of what life was like in this time period. Firefighting, for example, worked very differently in this time period. Uh, crime worked very differently. Slavery played a crucial role in the business world of this time period. Uh, politics were very different. I've got, I did lots of research on the politics of this era. This was a Whig town in what was essentially a democratic city. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting because today in the modern world, this is a democratic town and what's essentially a Republican state. So, and from that sense, there's sort of a through line that you can look back to the, this time period and see there was a political division then that still exists today. When I was doing the research for the book, I found three places that I would really like to take you to give you a sense of what it was like to live in Alexandria, DC. One of them is Jones Point Park. This is where you will find the original boundary marker for the southernmost tip of the District of Columbia. The other is the dueling ground, where a very famous duel took place between Secretary of State Henry Clay and Virginia Senator John Randolph. Uh, the other place that I was really interested in taking you is the infamous slave pen at the Franklin and Armfield Slave Dealers, which is where we're headed next. We're standing in one of the hidden gems of Old Town Alexandria. This is the infamous slave pen at the Franklin and Armfield Slave Dealers. We're located right now in the basement of the Northern Virginia Urban League. This was, at one time, the most prosperous slave business in America. Franklin and Armfield would round up slaves from all points, Virginia, Maryland, um, even Delaware and they would bring them here, process them, uh, and then they had camps. There was a men's camp on one side of the campus and a women's camp on the other side of the campus. They weren't allowed to commingle with each other, and they were kept here until they could be sold in large quantities down south. And so then they would be transported either via ship or sometimes marched on foot down to Mississippi and Louisiana. When the Union Army invaded Alexandria, one of the first places they came was here to this slave pen because it was an infamous spot in, the, in slavery. It had been featured in all of the abolitionist newspapers of the time period. And so when the Union soldiers came here, they came down here to the basement where we're now standing and found slaves actually shackled to the wall. Slavery played a very important role in the history of the district, the early history of the District of Columbia. It also played a very important role in why Alexandria wanted to leave the District of Columbia. If you were to take a look at this 50 year time period that Alexandria was part of the District of Columbia, you would see that the business of slavery was the predominant business in Alexandria. It was where all the money was, was at. And so this slave trading operation that we're standing in right now uh, was the most, one of the most successful businesses in Alexandria. And it was so successful, as a matter of fact, that the threat posed by the potential uh, outlawing of slavery in the District of Columbia was enough to push this movement forward for what they called retrocession, which was Alexandria leaving the District of Columbia. So slavery played a very important role as the predominant business during this 50 year time period. It also played a key role in why Alexandria wanted to leave the District of Columbia. We're standing now at the dueling ground in North Arlington. This is a famous spot because this is where the duel happened between Secretary of State Henry Clay and Virginia Senator John Randolph. This is a little known duel. I had actually never heard of this duel until I started researching the history for the book. But these are two titans of American politics. The modern day equivalent of this would be Secretary of State John Kerry versus Virginia Senator Mark Warner. So they arrived here on the day of the duel after Randolph had given a speech on the Senate floor calling Clay a blackleg, which is essentially a corrupt gambler. Clay did not like this. They ended up having a duel with each other. They arrived here. Uh, on the morning of the duel, they were handed weapons, they shot at each other, both sides missed. They were handed new weapons, they shot at each other and missed again. And then so they came together and so Randolph said to Clay, you owe me a new coat, Mr. Clay, because the bullet had pierced his coat. And so Clay said to Randolph, well, I'm glad the debt is not greater. 
Well, right now we are at Jones Point. We're standing on top of the southernmost tip of the District of Columbia here. And this is the boundary marker that was laid in 1791 when the federal government was creating the District of Columbia. When you look at a map of the District of Columbia, it looks like a diamond shape. Um, but if you look at a modern map of DC, it looks like moths have eaten the southern half of it. Uh, that's because the Virginia part of the original district was retroceded back to Virginia. This point is very significant because it was the original boundary marker of, there, there were a number of boundary markers that were laid all around this area to point out the, the diamond shape, the actual boundaries of the district. But this was the first, and it was also, there was a lot of ceremony that was involved in the placement of this stone in 1791 is when it was placed here. Um, so the significance actually has a, it's a long story that dates back to 1784. Right at the end of the American Revolution, the Congress was debating uh, how, they how they should have a capital city and whether or not they should create a district. A guy by the name of Elbridge Jerry, uh, who we know from gerrymandering, uh, suggested that a district be created, a federal district. Jerry suggested two possibilities. One was Trenton, New Jersey, and the other was Georgetown, Maryland. And so the Congress debated it and eventually chose Trenton. And then they kind of backtracked a little bit and approved funding for Georgetown and Trenton. The idea was that they would actually move in different times of the year. They would be in Trenton part of the year, then in Georgetown another part of the year. Virginians were really willing to uh, go to great lengths to make sure that the capital was placed here on the Potomac. And um, one of the people that played a, a key role in this is a guy whose name has been kind of lost to history, but it's a man by the name of David Stewart. This was a, a friend of Washington's. He was actually related to Washington. He was a business partner of Washington. Uh, interestingly enough, David Stewart actually laid the cornerstone here in that 1791 Masonic ritual. The infamous Compromise of 1790 is what finally sealed the deal. It uh, had to do with the assumption of debt. After the Revolutionary War, there was a whole lot of debt that had been taken on by the various states. And there was a, the politics of this is that the southern states had largely paid off their debts, but the northern states had not. So Am Alexander Hamilton wanted the federal government to assume these debts. Uh, James uh, Madison was against that, but Madison and the Virginians wanted the capital on the Potomac River. So uh, there was a, a famous dinner that was held at Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's house, where Thomas Jefferson invited James Madison and Alexander Hamilton. And then over dinner at Monticello and perhaps a few glasses of Madeira, they struck the Compromise of 1790, which was that the federal government would assume the debts, the wartime debts from the Revolutionary War in exchange for the capital being placed right here on the Potomac River. So the Compromise of 1790 was actually the key deciding factor in creating the District of Columbia. They uh, came here to the spot we're standing on now and had a uh, Masonic ritual. This is uh, the Masons had their aprons and the trowels and corn oil and uh, they gave some speeches right here on the spot and did the ceremonial laying of the southernmost boundary marker, which is what we're standing over now. And that was how the district was created.